Hey guys, welcome to another Age of Empires 4 video. I'm gonna be focusing on a build order that I just made myself with the Delhi Sultanate. The purpose of the build is going to be two quick Tower War Elephants. With them, I'm going to rush my opponent as fast as I can. But while keeping in mind that it's gonna be a high value, strong punching rush. Not something very quick, but the quickest possible that I can make it with the build order that I made. It's gonna be heavy on upgrades from a single town center. I wanna worry about secondary town centers later on. For now, I wanna keep that part a little bit more simple as there is already enough to learn when it comes to a new game. Now, Delhi Sultanate is a three out of three difficulty as per Age of Empires' advisory. They are special in that they mine berry bushes faster than other factions. And when you build mills near uh, berry bushes, they, it actually doubles the current amount of yield that berry bushes can give. One singular bush gives 250 food and this, building a mill near them puts a little cute fence around them that allows you to get 500 food uh, out of them. You gather from berry bushes faster and that actually means that you're mining 10% faster from berry bushes than from sheep. The strategy here is to go for quick berry bushes one or two locations and keeping sheep for a rainy day Maybe if those villagers ever get harassed. Scholars are going to be available in the Dark Age and they're going to be the linchpin of today's build order that I'm going to be trying to teach myself and you guys. Infantry units can construct defenses. None of their researches cost any gold or lumber or anything, but they do take a lot longer. It requires you to fully load three masks with three scholars inside each garrison in order to reach the research speeds that other factions enjoy. But in return, they'll all be free, besides the preloaded costs of making scholars. What's really cool though is that those scholars have multiple purposes. Scholars are able to heal your units, conquer religious sites, and bring back relics in order to give you a gold trickle per minute. And they have uh, a number of cool upgrades that we're going to be getting for them as well. Scholars can also be garrisoned inside a barracks, and this is the crazy part, to double production speed of that barracks. This applies not just to the units that you're making, which can lead to some pretty crazy parts, such as being able to build a pikeman every five seconds from a single barracks or a war elephant in 22 seconds. But it also influences the barracks and archery range and stables research times. This is a stacking bonus. So when you have a number of masks and you have a number of scholars inside the masks in order to make your research over the whole influence area quicker, you can have extra scholars in the barracks in order to cut down whatever you got in half once again. Scholars themselves have a, a diminishing return when reducing research speed. So the first one is the most impactful and the next and the next and the next are each a little bit less impactful. But still to cut it then down in half is a huge extra gain. Elephants are the Delhi Sultanate's unique unit and I'm going to be enjoying using them. Delhi Sultanate also has a unique upgrade which is like speed scroll in Warcraft 3. You can activate it on your units that gives you a 10 second double movement speed boost. The only drawback is you can't attack during it. Now that I've introduced you why I'm attracted to this faction and why I may be hoping to main Delhi Sultanate, let's start out with the build order. I've written it up here in a little notepad and hopefully you'll be able to understand the way that I write it. And here is the build order. You can always pause and come back to this part if you wanna see it in written form. This is how we're gonna do it. Okay guys, I've given you a quick glimpse of the build order. We're going to be looking at it soon again. I just want to make a note on placement here. This is not the full clean quick playthrough. I just want to give you the rundown of where that 250 lumber is going to be going through and the placement of your buildings. The first thing you're going to be doing is going to be making a mill as close as possible to the berries. And I'll show you soon in the real build order how that goes. You're going to be making a mining camp next to the gold as close as possible. You're going to be having your mask connecting the two, making sure that the orange area is connected. That's how you'll know that they are connected with an influence area. You want to make sure that both of these early ones are connected and that's going to increase the research times and bring them down a bit. And the final 50 lumber is going to be going to a house. This house should not be blocking any important areas, but still be close enough so that you have a small economic 
uh, loss by not having to walk too far with your villagers. You're not immediately going to be starting these four, but this is the placement suggestion that I would give you for your first four buildings. After that, you're not going to be mining any lumber for a, the time being. The first food that you have is going to be completely on non-stop villager production. You want to have non-stop villager production as this is an important tenet, a rule of thumb for any RTS that when you want something, you want to have it at a constant rate with as little hitches as possible. And the way that you end up mining resources is going to be the solution for your desires of which units and which buildings you want when. All right, now that I've given you the rundown of placement, Let's restart the scenario and we're going to do a full playthrough of the build order after I show it to you one final time. Here is the build order. The first 250 lumber is going to be going to the mill, the mining camp, the mosque and a house. Then you're going to be taking some villager uh, advice from how I mine with them. Your food management is going to be non-stop villager production and then we're going to rush for H2 with 400 food for the Dome of the Faith. Gold management, you're not going to spend any early on. You're just going to mine 100 exactly, then take all of the villagers off, except for two. Uh, you leave two on gold, and you're going to take all those villagers and put them on wood. This will allow your H to 75 gold, non-stop scholar production. We're not going to be doing any stone management right now, as we're playing all of this from one town center. Once... We have started H2, but not finished yet. We're gonna be doing that with four villagers, building the H2 building with four villagers. During this time, you're gonna be mining a lot of lumber, a lot of wood. The goal is to make a second mill at the second berry bush in order to prepare both for the future, as well as being able to start two consecutive mill upgrades. Remember, both of which are free for the Delhi Sultanate. But because they take long, I think it's worth to spend another 50 lumber 50 wood on that mill in order to get the two improved gathering rate upgrades started as quickly as possible. We're also going to have 150 lumber go towards a barracks in order to have it be finished as H2 finishes so that we can immediately start the barracks specific upgrade for hardened spearmen. Again, this is an upgrade that takes a while and we'd like to get that so we don't have to bother with tier one spearmen, dark age spearmen at all. As we reach H2, we're going to be trying to get 300 wood as quickly as possible to start two blacksmiths so that we can get armor upgrade against ranged attacks and armor upgrade against melee attacks. Alternatively, we could start one attack, one armor as well, but this is going to be down to scouting. And as you start interacting with an enemy player while trying to do this build, you're going to be finding plenty of ways to screw it up. And that's why right now I'm not considering uh, slowdowns because of your opponent or adaptations because of your opponent. Either way, you're going to start two upgrades with those two blacksmiths. We'll build as extra masks as we available. They only cost 100 wood and we want to make them available the moment we start overflowing our first mask with scholars. Keep in mind that our first mask can take three scholars. It starts with one, your first mask. So that after producing two scholars at tier two, you're going to want another one so that you can go to four scholars and five and so on. Then we're going to be pooling up 600 gold to go to H3. And we need 1200 food for that as well. And then by the time we finish H3, we're going to be looking to start two Tower War Elephants from two archery ranges. For the rest, houses as necessary. Now that we've done the build order, let's jump into it and see how smoothly we can perform it. All right, at the start, I like to put every villager on a sheep while seeing, hey, where are the bushes? I'm gonna build a mill there. I'm gonna take one villager to start it and another one to help him out, her out, okay? I'm gonna be taking a few sheep back home and then I'm gonna take three villagers and send them to mine from the bush. This is important because bushes start with 250 food and then they double when you finish your um they double when they f when you finish your mill which means if you mine too much from the bush immediately you'll be actually depleting double of its future capacity and this isn't very nice 
All right, now we're going to be mining with six on food here, uh, five on food on the bush, one on the sheep to finish its body so that other civilizations can't use certain techs to, um, to actually steal away the corpses of our sheep. That's why we're going to finish this sheep here, which still has 179 food. The moment our mill finishes, we immediately want to start wheelbarrow upgrade. We're going to start a house now as well. That house is uh, one or two seconds too late. Uh, we're going to have two on gold. So the one that is finishing the mosque is going to go to gold. We're going to be scouting around with our scout. Okay. And then we're going to go to, um, to, to food. Everything else goes to food. So two on gold for a while. And then the next villager at uh, 12 foot, we're gonna send it to gold. So we have two on gold for a while, then three, and the rest is all on food. We're gonna immediately start sanctity upgrade when the mosque finishes. And that's how we wanna do that. Note that we have no lumber and we're looking to get to 400 food and 200 gold as quickly as possible and preferably in a synchronized fashion. Three on gold is enough. The moment that this gold reaches 3,900, you can actually take back all the gold villagers and uh, start sending them back right now. All right, and then we're gonna, the moment we can, we almost have enough food. There. The moment we can, we're gonna build Dome of the Faith. We're gonna make that right here with three villagers that were on gold. And we want about one and a half villagers on gold during this process. We're now gonna take villagers off of food for the most part, three on food still, and the rest is gonna cut trees now as per the build order. These three, when they're done, are also going to go towards trees. We've brought all the sheep back. Keep in mind that you need to take this villager off of sheep once she finishes the last one. So we now have uh, two on gold. We now have enough for a uh, lumber camp, which we will be making right here. I'm gonna bring sheep back. Non-stop villager production. We have two on gold, that's good. He can help him with the lumber camp and then they're gonna mine this tree. Now we have enough for another house, pretty much. We're gonna make it. Non-stop villager production still, this is good. And keep in mind that our tier 2 is finishing, so we actually want the second, the second mill right now. So that we can get those upgrades that I was speaking about. We're gonna immediately start forestry once the lumber camp is done. This one is gonna start the second mill. And keep in mind, I also wanted to get that second barracks, which costs 150 lumber. Now we're gonna scout where the opponent is as well. My barracks is a little bit late, I see. Probably overmined food just at that. But that's too late to change by now. 150 lumber is what we need, and we're getting close. All right, new age begins. Immediately start making a scholar, which we have gold for because of the two peasants. We're gonna send a third villager now to gold. We actually have enough for barracks now, which we want as close as possible to the enemy, so oriented towards the south. We also want it next to the this building, the, the mosque. Keep your non-stop villager production, which is still the case. And now we're looking to get how much does this sheep still have left? 18 food. Now we're looking to get as quickly as possible 300 lumber. We're gonna start this upgrade immediately. We're gonna replace this and then change place. Note that the progress is remembered. The second mill starts the horticulture immediately. The barracks is in production. We still want 300 lumber in order to get that double blacksmith. We wanna sync them up to start two upgrades at the same time. Okay, our barracks is finished. Immediately start hardened spearmen. 
We now have 300 lumber, so we're gonna start double blacksmith. Hotkey, W, Q, W, Q, one on each. Okay, now I actually need to take a quick sneak peek again at our goals. We start double blacksmith, now we want to make extra mosques eventually, so that we can fit in the extra scholars, and when we can, a second barracks and two archery range. Oh, sorry, I opened the wrong window. <laughs> That's a cool sheet though, go to my Twitch channel and type exclamation mark AOE4 data to see that, uh, that data sheet, really, really interesting. So we want to start mosques when possible so that we can fill it with scholars. And now we're going to get as much food and gold as possible in order to go to tier three. But we also need food and wood in order to make a fair amount of units. So we don't want to go too crazy with the tier three tech. Uh, so we will be sending more now again to villagers. We're mining here and we're going to start the second upgrade here and the second we're going to start this upgrade for the mining camp ASAP and this one as well. Okay, we're working on all the upgrades, that's nice. We actually finished an upgrade. We're gonna start, just queue them up so that you don't forget them. All right, our two blacksmiths are finishing. Non-stop villager production is still going. We can build more houses, but we wanna build them in not an annoying area. Blacksmiths are finished. I'm gonna start two armor upgrades, one in each. Very good. Villagers are still being produced. And now we're gonna make uh, another mask which uh, really is allowed to be anywhere, but keep in mind that it's an important influence connector. We're gonna make it right here. No, we can't. Yeah, we're gonna make it right here to connect everything. Gold and food is coming in nice, but we're going a little higher on lumber. This is good because we need more barracks. There's the second barracks. And there's going to be uh, an archery range as well. Okay, golden food is coming in nicely. We have three on gold. We're eventually going to be adding another one there and keep making those scholars as well. And I think I had a small gap in production there, but that's fine. Okay, we can start making some spearmen because you need defenses. And we've also got a plan to start taking a religious site. Start all the upgrades in your second mask and build houses as necessary and mine from bushes. Non-stop villager production still. Okay, more spearmen can be made. And some archers. These are now going to go to gold. They're close enough for that. And everything else is going to go to food. She actually started killing sheep. That was not the intent. We're going to take some off lumber now as we have actually mined about as much lumber as we need right now for all of our purposes. While we can start another mask, And we, we actually will. We have about as much lumber spent as we need, besides needing to make units. But we want to get that food up quickly so that we can go to tier three. We are a bit low on lumber for uh, actually for archers. So it kind of depends what we're making at each point. Uh, the blacksmith upgrades, make feel free to get additional upgrades so that you don't lose any production there. You can also get the villager health, which actually takes not long at all. Just uh, 15 seconds, no problem. Okay, the rest more on lumber again. And all our upgrades have come in real nicely. Keep making scholars, you can queue up a few. We want to get to that H3, which for which we will make a house of learning. Now, in theory, we've been active with our scouts, which is a little bit less important for this build order. In theory, we have been scouting with our scouts. And we are getting a nice little army here for defense. Pikemen and archers. Pikemen to counter horsemen and archers to counter pikemen. A nice defense. Now, because we went for an early upgrade, of uh, for the scholars uh, actually part of the build is to find religious sites go there with monks with scholars and defending it with the troops that you have made this gives you 100 gold per minute if i'm not mistaken that's what the guide said but i think when i tested it it said 200 gold per minute either way controlling those sites early is really nice make sure to get enough houses 
and our gold and food is coming in real nicely so take special attention to how the villagers are distributed and make sure to keep making extra scholars and fill those moss that you have Okay, these are almost out of food. You want to make sure that when it gets busy and you're fighting, you're not forgetting about these and they turn idle. So feel free to take a bunch of them off, leave just a few to finish and send them to the next bush. While at the same time, of course, scouting for additional berry bush places to build your third mill and mine from that. We're now starting to cap the sacred site. The blacksmith upgrades are nicely underway and we're pretty much reaching we can even make a marketplace if we want we're pretty much reaching the point where we have enough food and gold in order to go to the next tier so this was a pretty smooth build it also very much depends of course on how much we have been producing uh units uh, we have had of course some gaps in unit production we just got this site that's going to give us extra gold per minute and look we have enough for the house of learning at 11 minutes that's a really nice time in order to be taken up and we are going to do just that so let's make that house of learning now uh, you can power build for no extra cost in warcraft 3 when you power build it costs extra gold and wood in this game it's not like that it's only the opportunity cost of your villagers working with four villagers means they're not mining something else and this does matter We're gonna find another berry bush somewhere or we can actually make a mill here and hunt some deer deer mining is the same time as berry bush mining for this faction so uh that's interesting we're gonna kill them all there's no uh food decay in this game unlike in age of empires 2 so that's something to be remembered let's make a mill kill the deer non-stop villager production don't forget that now we take one more look at the build order once h3 has started what did we want to have again oh yeah we wanted to aim for 1200 gold by h3 finish so we can start two tower war elephants and that they also need 800 food so we need to ramp up our gold production also keeping in mind that we haven't made scholars in a bit and they have an additional purpose besides gathering relics and taking holy sites they have an additional purpose of healing your troops when push comes to shove so let's make sure that we have that second archery range uh, started as well and uh when we see that hey yeah this tier three is finishing we need plenty of food as well we don't need as much lumber for this particular elephant and because of this we can start some farms so we so we have a few alternatives after we can't find bushes anymore or it becomes hard to defend them we have a scholar with us let's go ahead and pick up this relic which is a tier 3 and h3 possibility not yet but soon kill boars as as a muslim faction we cannot haram mine boars we cannot gather food so we just kill them when we see them okay ha tier 3 is almost done we've got all our upgrades now when tier 3 finishes remember we want to start two elephants immediately they cost 600 gold we don't have enough we should have been mining more i forgot to allocate some more two gold now we can only make one all right let's do it but what we can do is we can start an upgrade to veteran archers we can still try to get more on gold away from lumber we're getting our veteran archer upgrade let's get our veteran spearman upgrade as well and start as many as we can there while also making uh, not archer we already are producing two uh things uh blacksmiths immediately get your blacksmith upgrades reduce the time it produces uh, it takes to produce infantry you want to get that asap you want to get forced march which is your equivalent of speed scroll 10 second fast movement but you can't fight that's going to help you to bridge the gap the house of learning has special upgrades we're going to prioritize the houses and town centers grant additional population that is going to be very helpful for us when we actually need to fast produce units from a small amount of barracks which is exactly what we have all right we can make another elephant and we're going to make a bunch of archers our food has been our money has been spent very nicely we found another berry bush that we're going to use uh, where is our monk he can now pick up this relic he can bring that back to the mosque we have nine scholars inside the three mosques that leads to a lot of research time reduction in fact nine puts you on equal footing with other races 
Now we're just going to spam upgrades. We're just going to get everything in the correct order. Armor first, then attack, and then siege engineering. And for here, we're also going to press everything. Things don't take as long anymore. Go ahead and click all your mass. Get that swiftness upgrade. Is there anything else? Every economy building is going to have new upgrades as well. So you get that the moment your tier 3 finishes. I can really uh, recommend. And that's everything pretty much for the opening build order. Anything else you want to do is you're gonna your anything else you're gonna be wanting to do is up to you but keep in mind that this is where it gets really fun this 15 minute mark that's a little late already if you do everything cleanly you should be able to attack by 14 minutes with two elephants and that's the build then you're gonna take scholars out of your mask you're gonna put them in your barracks and you'll see something super cool is that they reduce that production time of units Whereas a war elephant right now costs 45 seconds, the moment you put someone inside, it's gonna take only 22 seconds, which is insane. We're gonna start them, we're gonna make man at arms in eight seconds, and we're gonna make veteran spearmen in just five seconds. This is insane. So you wanna make sure you've got the houses, you've got the money, you've got the economy. We have so much units, let's attack with it. You do 102 siege damage with elephants into uh, buildings. So at this point, it's really just go time. You can decide what kind of uh, formations you wanna move with. And then you're gonna attack with it. Let the elephants reign supreme and crush your enemies. Relic has been brought back for bonus gold mining. Keep managing your economy and have fun with the game. Hope you enjoyed my initial stab, my initial attempt at creating a Delhi Sultanate build order. I'm sure there's many different others, including which tier two building to make in order to go to the dark, uh, feudal ages. You don't have to open with a Dome of the Faith. You can also open with the other building, which I have yet to test. When I do, I'll be sure to show another build order for that. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and leave a comment in the section. And if you really want to consider, you can also join and become a member. Thank you so much. See you next time.